If you've just started doing Bayesian data analysis, some of the mathematics and the concepts can be kind of difficult to grasp at first. However, there's some very good tools online to help you visualize and clarify what's going on when we do what's known as Bayesian inference. Now, like with traditional null hypothesis significance testing or NHST methods, we're trying to calculate or estimate parameters from the population that our samples come from. Now with Bayesian inference, what we do is we create a credible interval of possible parameter values given the data that we've collected. To show you this, here's a web page created by Rasmus Bath, which allows you to look at this interactively. So here we have more or less arbitrary groups of data, and we're basically carrying out the equivalent of an NHST independent samples t-test. Now you can look at this for more information. These are just heights from different teams. I think the top one is a basketball team and the bottom one is a hockey team. Now if we click to start, notice that in these boxes we have burn-in samples and number of samples. The burn-in samples are simply samples that we discard from our Markov chain Monte Carlo simulation, or I just usually refer to it as an MCMC -MC chain, which are discarded because the chain essentially starts out in a random arbitrary location, which may not be a very good location to start out with when we're trying to estimate our target distribution. These number of samples here are the actual samples that we collect to build up our posterior distribution, which is a distribution of credible parameter values that we've calculated given the data. Now notice here this chain's been building up this whole time, and if you flip it on its side, this is this histogram distribution that gets built up. This is the posterior. And lastly we have this 95% highest density interval, or HDI, which covers 95% of the most credible parameter values. So notice here the actual credible difference between these groups is about 0.15. We can extract any sort of, uh, let's say, mean or mode or any measure of central tendency to describe this distribution. And we can also report this HDI. If this HDI includes, say, a null value or something that we would use to say that there's no difference between the groups, such as zero, then we could go ahead and make that claim. Another cool thing about Bayesian inference is that we can establish what's called a rope or region of practical equivalence around certain values. And if our entire HDI falls within that rope, then we can go ahead and actually accept that value, even if it's a null value. Notice that you cannot do this with NHST. In addition, you get a very rich array of data from the rest of your parameters. Even though, essentially, we're just trying to estimate a parameter group difference between the means, we can also look at each mean individually for each group, in addition to other parameters like standard deviation and normality. I'm not going to go through all of these, but you can take a look at these and also plot things like effect size, if you want to report that as well. Notice that all these distributions have their own highest density interval in this red bar right here. So I think this is a really cool tool to just play around with, see what happens with different groups. You could add in data of your own if you have two independent groups. Uh, you can increase the number of samples, decrease the number of samples, burn in steps. But in general, more samples is better because it will give you a more accurate representation of the posterior distribution for those parameters. So what I'm going to do next is to show you how you can do this for a simple, let's say, the equivalent of a one-sample t-test, where we're just trying to estimate a group mean, and we might not have two independent groups. But notice that even with what we just reviewed, you still get estimates of parameter values for the groups individually. So hope this helps. Hope this starts to build up some of your intuition about what's going on with Bayesian data analysis. I love web apps like these that just show how these different statistical concepts work. So next we'll be talking about RStudio and implementing something called JAGS to estimate our parameter values. So I hope to see you guys in the next video.